J.I. Packer said, if you want to understand how much a person gets Christianity, then see how much they make of the thought of God as Father and of us as His kids. You hear this word, Abba. It's mentioned in the book of Galatians, and it's an Aramaic word. It's a word that means daddy for anyone. It's a word of intimacy. And so that's been my heart's greatest desire is to better understand Abba Father. And what I realize is as we do that, as we draw close to Him, we begin to see the world and to see people the way He sees them. And so as we do that, we begin to notice in Scripture 44 times the word fatherless is used. And a majority of those are used in the context of the Father, God, Abba, looking out specifically for the fatherless to tend to their needs. And the 21st century version of the orphan is really the fatherless kid. That's primarily what we're seeing. And the call is still the same for the church to notice them. And that's why this year for 2023 summer camps, we're starting to fundraise now. And we're calling that the ABBA Project. We're actually gonna have more walkabouts in 2023 than we've ever had before. We're planning on having anywhere from 12 to 16 this year. Now, with that comes a lot of financial responsibility and a lot of logistics. And so we're trying to fundraise $170,000 for walkabouts in 2023. As I encourage you to seek the Father, I just wanna invite you into that to be able to sponsor one of our campers or one of their mentors. It's a thousand dollars of sponsorship. So if God tugs on your heart and you're interested in sponsoring a kid, be encouraged. I know a thousand dollars is a lot of money. Just remember that some sponsorships are comprised of 15 different people chipping in little amounts. So whatever you give helps, every little bit counts. On another hand, it's really cool too that they are developing a close, deeper relationship with a spiritual father, with a mentor that goes home with them, whether they're from Baltimore or Detroit or, or Phoenix, that person can continue to pour into them. But most importantly, that mentor is pointing them towards a deeper relationship with a perfect, heavenly Abba Father. If you would just pray and ask the Lord what you can do to help out. We have needs logistically. We always need tons and tons of prayer but we also need the financial means to do it. If you feel led to do so, you can visit us on the web at www.outdooradventures.org. You click on donate and there's a designation box you can put, walkabout sponsorship. Or you can mail us a check. You send it to 262 Crystal Springs Drive, Florence, Alabama, 35634. And again, in the memo, make sure you write, walk about sponsorship and you can make that check out to outdoor adventures and whichever one of those you fill thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you for being a part of this ministry for being a part of this team i love you hey everybody thank you for watching that quick promotional video about the abba project uh, this is not going to be the short update video for september and october um, this is me rambling about all of the good and amazing things that God has been doing. And I'm just going to take my time with it. And if there's only one person that watches it, cool. And if nobody watches it, then uh, may God be glorified by me celebrating and boasting in all the things he's doing. Because uh, I'm excited about it. And I still can't believe that I get to do this for a living and get to be a part of what he's doing. So without further ado, here we go. Um, the first thing is, let's talk about some expansion. More and more what I'm doing with the Alliance is pouring into ministries, helping them get started or helping them get to the next level and what God is accomplishing or asking them to accomplish rather. And so with that, uh, let's start with expansion here in the Shoals. Uh, we're helping a ministry get started from the ground up called the Angel Mission. This will be an equine therapy ministry. And so a lot of our local partners that we already have here in the Shoals will be able to plug their youth into this equine therapy ministry. So those kids will get to ride horses and receive uh, a whole lot of deep and lasting healing. And um, not only that, but it's Christ-centered, so they're going to get a chance to bond more deeply with their mentors, and they're going to receive intentional biblical discipleship in an outdoor setting. 
Uh, a lot of these kids never dreamed of riding a horse, let alone getting to do it maybe on a consistent basis. And so just be praying for that ministry as it's formed, be praying for the funds to do it and all the moving parts that go into it. And, uh, and also just take time to thank God for bringing that relationship to us. Uh, we're honored to be able to serve them and, and help them. Uh, number two is our Memphis crew. I, I'm really excited about these guys. Um, being able to expand into Memphis means a couple of things. First of all, it means that when I go out there, I get a chance to eat at Central Barbecue, which has the best chicken wings on the entire planet. Uh, but more important than that, um, I just really believe in what God's doing through these guys. Uh, in fact, they recently came to our house um, with their families. They spent a few days with us just seeking Jesus, uh, eating good food together, uh, spending quality time getting to know each other better, and then just strategizing and figuring out how to accomplish what God is asking them to accomplish. So these guys are doing really big things. For example, this coming New Year's Eve, they're going to have a ministry event in Memphis it's going to be multiple ministries collaborating together. Lots of local families from the community will be ministered to and receive the gospel. Um, I know people will get saved at this event, and I know that they're going to responsibly plug those families into local churches. So just be praying for that event. Be praying for our ministers in Memphis. And, uh, and in fact, while you're at it, pray for all of our partners in the Alliance, um, that they would just be blessed by the Lord and continue to be guided by His Spirit. Um, next is raising up Timothy's. I, I, I seldom talk about this because it can sound kind of arrogant or something, but it's just, it's a goal. It's on my refrigerator. I have a bucket list of life, you know, accomplishments that I would really like to achieve and things that are important to me in my marriage with my kids. And one of the main ministry goals I have is to be used by God to raise up a hundred Timothy's in my lifetime. What that means is instead of just me evangelizing the masses, uh, which a lot of times in ministry, that's what it looks like. And, and some are certainly called to that, and I am not trying to degrade that. But for me, my call is in line with the Great Commission to make disciples. And to make disciples, what that looks like is to multiply and duplicate. And so whether you flip burgers for a living or whether you do what I do full time, that's our call. Our call is to disciple and raise up the next generation of leaders who will then in turn go and raise up other disciples. Jesus raised up 12 and those 12 each raised up two to 12. And before you know it, within a few generations, um, Christianity becomes a world religion and we're able to circulate the globe with the best news that there ever has been. So that's the model of the Bible. And, and with that, um, I want to mention a guy that I've been pouring into named Nathan Kimball. Um, I just, when I think about that goal of 100 Timothys, he's one of the guys that I think of first. He is being discipled by more than just me, um, but I have the privilege of meeting with him once a week and also at least once a week pouring into youth with him in ministry, in mission. And uh, this guy, his fire for Jesus is so contagious. He is so close to the Lord. His prayer life, his knowledge of the scriptures already, his maturity in Christ. When you, when you meet this guy, you just immediately, you see Jesus. You, you see Jesus in him. And um, I just couldn't love him more than I do. So be praying for that relationship. Be praying for that friendship. Be praying specifically for Nathan. He's applying for youth pastor jobs and, and really trying to explore what full-time ministry is going to look like for him. He knows he's called and the Lord's kind of narrowing that down. But just help him with that. He's in his last year at the University of Northern Alabama. And um, he is willing to do anything. Whatever God asks him to do, he will obey. So be praying for him. Um, next, the Fatherhood Commission. It's pronounced Fatherhood Commission. I've been calling it the Fatherhood Commission for so long, but it's the Commission because it's a collaborative of father-based or father-related ministries from around the country. I think there's over 300 of them at this point, maybe more. Some of them are focused on helping dads become better dads, more godly dads, more biblical dads. Some of the ministries are focused on reconciliation between a father and kids. And then there's a lot of us that are focused on fatherless uh, ministry. Um, but either way, uh, I just wanted to share with you how amazing this organization is. Um, the guys that run our monthly prayer calls, Jeff Kemp 
and Mitch Temple, who's the executive director of the Fatherhood Commission. Uh, these guys do such an amazing job. Like I, I don't attend the call so that I can just rub elbows with a bunch of people. Um, I attend the call because um, I connect with God during that call. Um, it's very, very intentional in our prayer time. It's very, it's led very, very well. And when I leave the call, I feel filled up. I feel like I've connected with the Lord. I feel encouraged to see all these other ministers who are seeking after God and being a part of His mission. And some of them, a lot of them, um, are a part of the mission to end fatherlessness um, and to make that a thing of the past. It's not to say it will be fully ended. It's to say that the epidemic will end and it will become less normative. It will no longer be the average experience for teenagers in this country. So I just want to give a shout out to the Fatherhood Commission for doing such a great job. And I'm just excited and um, blessed to be a part of that. Uh, next is something most people don't even know about. It's called Sunday Bread. Um, I kind of borrowed that from Daily Bread. Um, the Sunday Bread is a devotional that goes out every Sunday. 90% of the time, I'm the one that, that writes the devotional or I record the devotional. And that gets sent out to ministry leaders. It gets sent out to walkabout graduates that are a part of the Wolf Pack. I hope this side. Um, it gets sent out to friends, brothers, family. Um, but this devotional is usually three to seven minutes long, sometimes a little bit longer, or sometimes it's something that I just write out if I'm not around uh, to film. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you because um, most people didn't even know about it. So I'm going to include an example in the email uh, about what that looks like so you can see what it is. Um, just to show that every week um, I'm teaching and um, mo most exciting is the fact that a lot of the kids that we've poured into over the years, for what, almost nine years now, I think, um, are receiving um, the Word of God on a weekly basis, and they're staying connected to this community, which is really cool. Uh, I can't imagine, what, 20 years from now, if Jesus hasn't returned yet, to be able to see some of the same people on there leading it, and just to see how this thing grows. So be praying for that. Be praying for Sunday bread, for that devotional, that God would um, be made known that he would, uh, he would grow his family through his word and that he would just keep using that to bless people. Uh, next on the list is Detroit. So uh, this last walkabout season, we hosted two ministries, Avengers Mentoring and E210 Outdoors. Um, they focus a lot of their efforts on Houston, Texas, but they also focus in Detroit. And they brought some kids out from Houston this last summer, um, but that relationship is, is flourishing and I'm excited to announce that they've committed to bring fatherless boys from the inner city of Detroit, Michigan out to our base camp this summer to go on walkabout. So celebrate with me there. Pray for the means to be able to do that uh, for travel expenses and uh, for logistics and all the things that it's going to take to get them out there. It's, a, it's quite a journey, <laughs> but, um, but it's worth it. It is absolutely worth it. Um, and those that are hesitant when they first come out to, to try out a walkabout and see what it's all about, um, usually it's a, it's a headache to get out there. But by the time they're done, they, they want to do it every year. They want to do multiple trips. And it's because God is moving through that ministry. So just be praying for all that. And also celebrate with me that God is continuing to grow us around this country. Uh, next is a conference. It was recently attended by, <coughs> excuse me, Stephen Chaco Ledzelter and his beautiful wife Rose. Um, this was an event I attended last year in northern Wisconsin. And um, it's a, an event that's hosted by Psalm 68.5 and a Fellowship of Camps for Fatherless and uh, Angel Tree uh, Prison Fellowship, which is a, an amazing ministry that funds some of our kids who have a, a parent who's incarcerated. Uh, but either way, all of these ministries work together to equip and encourage other fatherless camp ministries. So this is really specific, uh, specifically geared towards camp ministry. So this is more of an outdoor adventures event and less of a, an alliance event. Uh, either way, Chaka was kind enough to go out there with Rose and uh, to represent us out there. And um, I'll include a picture here, but it was, it was really, really fruitful. They came back feeling encouraged and equipped. But the thing that stuck in my mind the most about what they updated me on was this. Two things. 
uh, what we do in the fatherless camp ministry space is very unique. There's really nothing else out there like it at all. Um, and the second thing is our uh, intentional follow through with the students, making sure that they come with mentors and go home with those mentors and that we foster that relationship between student and their spiritual fathers who can point them to a perfect heavenly father and disciple them after the ministry has taken place. So instead of you know, receiving this, this high at camp, this spiritual high, and then going home and then nothing changes, just making sure that there is follow through. And, and we really feel like that is our role um, in our partnership with these ministries is to help foster more of that intentionality. So just be praying for that and also thanking God for those relationships. Man, some of those, uh, some of those people are just the most amazing people ever. Brian Johnson, who runs Psalm 68, five, Stephen Foster, who um, his, is his um, sidekick. Um, and an amazing leader. Uh, both those guys are just unbelievable and really encouraging. So be praying for them by name. Be praying for that ministry and, um, and all the good that they do in helping those of us in that fatherless ministry camp space accomplish what God's asked us to accomplish. Uh, next on the list, and there's so many other things. I'm, I'm cutting out 90% of it. I'm trying to go quickly. Um, but things to pray for. Um, New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. I will be uh, heading down to New Orleans quite a few times between December and February. And so be praying for that. In fact, I got some of my books in. Um, these are just some of them. <laughs> and uh, I am going to be a busy boy. And uh, I just need prayer because I'm adding so much to my plate with that that um, I would find a really healthy rhythm. Um, so be praying for that, for time management specifically, that God would just help me manage that well and that it wouldn't feel like work. Uh, I, I want it to feel like spending time with Jesus and being equipped and learning and growing. I don't want it to feel like school or, or just a, a job. So be praying for that. Be praying for safe travels. And also, I uh, we are connected with ministries uh, down in New Orleans. And so I'll be spending time with some of those partners. And specifically, one of those ministries is doing a phenomenal job uh, working in a really rough area in New Orleans. So just be praying uh, that as I connect with him, that I'm able to bless him some way, somehow, um, to encourage him in what he's doing and help and support him in what he's doing. Uh, as a part of the alliance, um, that we would just wash his feet well. So be praying for him, please. Be praying for that ministry. Be praying for New Orleans. Be praying for my travel. Be praying for time management. Um, next is uh, open house. So um, on May 27th, 2023, and that's a long ways out, but I'm going to start promoting it now. We're going to have an open house where literally everybody is invited to come see our new base camp um, in Chama, New Mexico. And so we're going to have food, uh, we're going to have a time of prayer, and uh, just giving people a tour, showing them the new base camp, showing them around, and uh, it's just going to be a time to celebrate what God has done. It's one of those things you can look at, the Refuge 2.0, you can look at it with your eyes and you go, oh, that's a miracle. Um, because if you know the story of how it all took shape, <laughs> you just know this is, it was amazing. Step by step, you could see God's hand in it, and it was just a huge blessing. Every time I drive up that driveway and see that lodge, I'm just, I smile from ear to ear. I'm like, man, Lord, you are so good, and what you do is amazing, and I love watching him work. It's just exciting. So mark your calendars, May 27th. I'll send out official invitations so we can uh, take down RSVP and, and find out how much food we need and all that stuff. Next on the list is The Haven. That's our base camp here in northern Alabama. A lot of people have been asking me what that is like and, and all that. Uh, and now is a good time because it's getting used more and more and more. And uh, I suspect it's going to continue to grow. Um, whether we like it or not, it seems to be God's will. And so there will be people in our base camp quite a bit. And so um, I'm including a, a quick uh, video tour of the Haven right after this is over. When I say goodbye to you, uh, stay tuned and uh, it'll go right into that video and you can check it out. Um, I think it's six or seven minutes long, something like that, but you'll get uh, just a quick iPhone video walkthrough of what the base camp looks like here. And also some prayer requests with it. Um, interestingly, we're able to use all the land behind the base camp. It's like 130 acres. And it just went up on the market for sale. I was just contacted uh, by the agent to see if we wanted to purchase it. And I said, <laughs> we, we do not have that kind of money, but 
let me pray about it and just see what God does. Um, so pray for this. Pray that either God would just bless us with money to buy that property or bless us in the way that uh, maybe the sellers would just donate it to us. <laughs> that would be amazing. Or um, the easiest solution would be um, that God would just bring a buyer that would still allow us to use a lot of that property so that when campers come out and people stay at the base camp, they can go and, and hike around uh, that property and, and play in the creek and watch animals and, and just enjoy his creation. So that's it. Um, last but not least, things to pray for. Uh, before I close out, I want to talk about St. Louis. So as you know, Chaco is still in St. Louis before he moves into the refuge full time with his wife. Uh, so he's doing ministry work in St. Louis for us. We're hoping to have a St. Louis walkabout this summer. Um, but one of the ministry things um, that we've been a part of out in St. Louis was this last summer. I was asked to speak at a youth retreat. Uh, I, I spoke two or three times. And um, if I remember correctly, at least 100 teenagers gave their life to Jesus. And, um, and so they've asked me to come back. And that'll be the 11th, 12th, and 13th. Um, I'm going back to a camp just south of St. Louis, and uh, it's a winter retreat. I've been asked to speak four times, and uh, there'll be probably 60 or 70 kids there. And a lot of those kids were at the summer retreat, and some of those kids were the ones that gave their life to the Lord. And so the focus of this retreat will be discipleship, multi-level discipleship, multi-generational discipleship, and missional discipleship. So I'll be speaking in sessions one, two, and four, and then I'm having Chaco uh, speak in session three. I wanted to partner with him in that as a part of his training and discipleship and, and to put that on his shoulders and just work with him through it. So if you could be praying for the hearts of the hearers, be praying for all the logistics that are going to go into this event and be praying that I would get out of God's way, that Chaco would get out of God's way and that the Lord would speak through us clearly and boldly, that it wouldn't just be a bunch of sermons. Uh, specifically pray this, pray that God would equip these young people for the work of the ministry and to walk in maturity in Christ. That multi-generational discipleship would take form in that community where all ages are working together uh, for the sake of God's mission and God's glory. And um, just pray for that. And pray for uh, Sam, the, the youth minister there, that uh, God would just continue to use her in big ways and uh, just to bless her. And that this would be... <laughs> Maybe it's an impossible prayer, but, but nothing's impossible with God, right? But pray that maybe this event would be somewhat restful for her. Um, that she would have a lot of support staff and a lot of help so that she's not worn thin um, during that retreat. Because um, those of us who've served in youth ministry and, and uh, host a big retreat like that know that there's not much sleep and uh, it's just go, go, go. So just be praying for her um, in big ways, please. So that's all I have. Stay tuned um, for the tour of the Haven, our base camp here in Alabama. Uh, but before I cut out, just wanted to take the time to thank you once again. Um, I say it a million times. I'll say it a million more. Um, I am so thankful for this family. I'm so thankful for your support, your prayers. Some of you send me text message encouragements. Some of you I know for a fact pray for me by name every day and pray for this ministry. Uh, so many of you donate your time and your energy, your talents. Um, some of you donate money. Some of you donate a lot of money. And um, we are just, we're so thankful. This is a, this is the Jesus show. This isn't the Eric show. This is so much bigger than us. But isn't it exciting to, to be a part of it and to get to partner with him in it and for us to be a team, a family working together for this mission and to see the mission get accomplished before our very eyes. I mean, it's happening, folks. We are expanding around the country. The Lord is raising up fatherless ministers around the country who are going into dark, dark places and preaching the good news to the lost and discipling them and raising them up and breaking generational curses so that they could be excellent fathers and husbands and followers of Jesus all the days of their life. They don't have to continue this cycle of, of fatherlessness and abuse and poverty. And so just praise the Lord. You're a part of that team. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
Love you guys tremendously, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. By popular demand, I wanted to give everybody a quick tour of the Haven, which is our base camp out here in the Shoals area of Alabama. Uh, this map right here is pretty awesome. Uh, this is for the Alliance, for ending the fatherless epidemic. The blue pins are where we're currently at, and the cream colored pins are where we're praying to be to acquire the resources to go into those areas and within 10 years to be in every major city in the United States. So pretty cool. Heading into the game area. We've got a pool table, game table, refrigerator, speaker for music, guitar for Sing a worship around the fire, some hammocks for hanging out in the yard. Here's our theater room and devotional room. We're teaching lessons, studying God's word, praying together. These couches all swivel around so you can sit sort of in a triangle. A small library of recommended books. this way. We've converted this garage into a second game room. Ping pong, pop a shot. Outdoor adventures. We've got a coffee bar for cocoa, tea, coffee, and popcorn. This is a blessing right here. We've got a full bathroom. And the bunkhouse. This is where the leader sleeps. And then we've got four triple bunk beds in here. Now let's give you a run to the outside area and you'll see just how special this place is where we share meals together. Got a giant grill, porch swing up there. I don't know if you can hear it, but we've got a creek that runs through the backyard. And now let me take you all the way to the fire pit. I'll speed this up. Here we go. magic happens I cannot begin to tell you how many times we've been able to encounter the Lord out here go deep with one another share our testimony share our stories share our pains and occasionally bring out the guitar and do some worship together you just see how peaceful and beautiful this is you can hear the creek We're surrounded by hills beautiful hardwoods. I'll take you back down to the creek.
All right, this is one of my favorite spots. This flat area um, is perfectly suited for laying up some hammocks, listening to the creek. The sun just pops through enough. It's just a really beautiful spot. What's interesting is we have access to this area, but we don't we don't own it. Um, the owners uh, have been gracious enough to let the neighbors around here use this land and uh, walk through it. But what's fascinating is we were just approached about purchasing 39 and a half acres back here. Um, so if you can join me in praying for that, I, man, that is a lot of land that we sure could use, but uh, we only want the Lord's will and we are still praying about it. We don't have our minds made up one way or another, but if uh, we don't purchase it, pray that the people who do would allow us to continue to use it or um, that they wouldn't cause a nuisance to where the land we already have uh, would be tough to use. One of my favorite spots, check this out. Are you ready for this? I don't think you are. Here we go. Pretty amazing waterfall, right? And it actually, the water goes down into the earth right there into an aquifer. That's why you don't see the stream flowing. And it pops out about 200 yards that way. An underground river, underground creek. Anyways, y'all, that's it. This is uh, the Haven out here in Alabama. Uh, more and more, it's getting used. And um, just pray that God is glorified in this. It's almost impossible to not connect with God out here if you're willing to put away your cell phone and to get quiet. He's just, the beauty of his creation does something and it opens up our hearts and allows us to begin to connect with the Lord. And anyways, we're just so thankful for this. And a lot of you wanted to see what it was about, especially all of our family out there in Colorado and in Texas. We miss you so much. We love you so much. Hope you enjoyed this little tour. Wish you could be here right now with us. Bless you.